Well, I'm very concerned about the, uh, you know, the future of, uh, of the natural world, really. And um, that's one of the reasons why I do this. I mean, I got into this business because uh, I love nature and loved being outside and animals in the ocean, and I still do. But, um, and, and this is true, I think, for many of my colleagues, that we started out in this business uh, out of a love of, of nature, and we're now seeing ourselves in, in, in a sort of emergency room physician role, trying to figure out what's wrong and fix it. We call our project ZEN, the Zoster Experimental Network. Zoster is the scientific name for eelgrass, the seagrass species that we're focusing on. And ZEN is a collaborative network of about 50 scientists and students throughout the world, throughout the Northern Hemisphere, that are conducting the same experiment at each of 16 different sites. Uh, the, the experiment consisted of um, artificially uh, fertilizing seagrass beds as well as taking away the grazers that can clean the algae off. The eelgrass and many of the other seagrass species throughout the world have been declining in recent years uh, fairly, fairly precipitously. Um, many seagrasses, like corals actually, are living near their upper thermal tolerance. In other words, they're living in water that's about as warm as they can stand it. So as the water warms up, they go over a tipping point. This has been shown in the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, in 2005, we had the big heat wave and, and the grass died almost throughout the entire bay. Fortunately, it came back, but we don't know how many times that can happen. The most exciting thing we've found is that there is a very strong uh, uh, importance of biological diversity in these patterns. And this is something that we have seen in many small-scale experiments over the years, but it's never been clear whether higher diversity systems, that is, systems with more species of animals and plants in them, are more productive in nature as they are in these experiments. And it looks as if that's what we're finding here. When the eelgrass is more genetically diverse, um, it tends to support more animals, probably because it grows faster and, and is denser. We don't know that from our studies, but others have shown that. The second thing we found is that when we have more grazer species, more of these small invertebrates, snails and crustaceans and whatnot, we tend to get more efficient uh, grazing and th therefore more efficient control of cleaning the grass of algae. And that's very exciting because this has been a big topic in ecology uh, over recent years, but so far most of what we know about that comes from small-scale experiments. So this is one of the first demonstrations of that in, in a, in a real-world situation. There are a lot of people in the world and our standards of living on a global scale are increasing, which is of course wonderful for people, but that also means that our footprints are getting much, much larger. And uh, if we are going to have any kind of nature for our grandchildren, we need to figure out how to live um, sustainably uh, and reconcile our activities with what nature needs too.